So I'm going to call me in order. I'm going to call me in order at 632. Um, let's see, do we have any additions to the agenda? I don't see anything on the set board memo. Anybody else have anything? No additions? Okay. Review of minutes, November 7th. Uh, and we don't have Flora's last name, I see, and nobody remembers what it was. I don't remember. Who was Flora? I wasn't at the meeting. I was here, but I don't remember. You don't remember? I don't Somebody remember just called in. Oh, okay. And I don't recall that she said anything. I just saw that she popped on the oh, screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do? We just might as well leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Just for Maybe she doesn't have a last name. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> you never know. Okay. Uh, I assume everyone's ready in minutes. They look fine to me. We need to, um, I wasn't here, so I can't pledge their accuracy. They look great, as usual. Um, I don't know what time we adjourned. That was my the only thing that was kind of open. Did that get put well, in? that's there? because you had to we had a, yeah, that's an executive yeah. session. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll amend that. Okay. okay, that was the only thing. That's weird. So does it have the time that we went into the first now there? Yeah, I have it. I have yeah, it. For some reason, my it. version, I must have PDF the wrong one. Okay. Well, then the executive session 805. Yeah. And then, and then okay. there's a blank yeah. to adjourn. Yeah. You, could, you could write some yeah, things in there. Yeah, I have it. Yeah, okay. no, I have it. I, okay. I clearly PDF the wrong version. Okay. So we could say that we will approve the minutes as amended. amended. So, so Okay. And do we have a second? Second. Oh. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. The minutes are approved. Uh, okay, let's go on to the next thing here. Con uh, County Road Celebration. I don't know if uh oh they're oh. Larry right now. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll wait because we're running some of them slowly. Yes. Are you skipping the public comment section? Oh, right. I guess I did. Public comment. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. We reviewed the minutes and I forgot the public comment. Okay, let's go back to that then. We have some time. Are you here for public comment? You're really garbled. Did you say something? <laughs> yeah, I said, um, do you have public comment? Yeah, Seth, Seth, it's a bit of an echo. It's, it's, it's a little difficult to hear. I, I don't know who's sitting over on the left-hand side of the screen, but that person I, who's off screen, I can hear perfectly. Me? That's, that's, that's John. probably me. me. Gina, probably me. Oh, oh that's you? Yeah. Oh, anyway. I, I did have a question for the select board. Is now a good time to ask it? Sure. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> um. So my question has to do with um, the intersection of Brazier Road and Gallison Hill and Town Hill. And yeah. a few years ago, we spent a lot of time looking at that intersection and coming up with all sorts of possibilities for slowing people down there as it's a pretty dangerous intersection. So um, I wondered what the status of that was because um, I think Several years ago, I asked Bruce about it, and if I re remember correctly, he said it wasn't going to be dealt with until Town Hill was paved again. Um, I, I'm just curious what the status of that whole, um, all of that research is and, and the discussion that we had, if anybody's given it any thought, if we can do something about it. I think, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so um, that's, that there still stands. Nothing is planned for the intersection at this point. I mean, I was here when we had the discussion, and then the last thing I knew is nothing was going to happen until it was repaid, just as Bruce said to you last year. So it hasn't. You got garbled again. I'm sorry. You got garbled again. Okay. 
if you're this single. Well, that's why I'm resistant to you. And I have to dig that Okay. Hi. Can you hear me better? Do you think so? Let's give it a try. So nothing's happened. Nothing will happen until it gets repaved. And when will that be? I'm not sure. We've got to look at the paving schedule. What we do is evaluate all the paved roads every year, and we prioritize the one that needs it the most. That one is coming up because that's one of the first ones we did around 10 years ago. So that road is coming up for repaving. I'm not sure if we're going to do it this next year or the year after. It'll be fairly soon. Okay. I'll be back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, under public comment, are there any more public that would like to talk? Nope. Okay. Now we will move to County Road Celebration with Larry Gilbert. This Larry Gilbert? I'm Larry Gilbert. There you go. Make, hey, excuse me, guys. Could you, maybe, uh, Seth, maybe you want to move down near Gina. Okay. Because when you put sure. your head down, um, it just gets all garbled. I don't think any of us heard what you said that time. Oh, that's weird. Are these things on? I can move. Well, when you talk, would you look up and talk to us? I could, I could hear you just now, but I couldn't hear you just to, to say. Well, I'll just make sure I'm looking up. Yeah. Yeah. Is okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. You can hear me now. Yes. And I won't, and I won't say much. <laughs> Hey, don't make promises <laughs> you can't keep. <laughs> don't make the promise, John, because you'll send me to it. <laughs> ready, ready? I'm ready. Okay, Larry Gilbert from the County Road is going to give us a report on the celebration. So uh, thank you for giving me a minute to, to do that. And hello, everybody. Um, uh, I wanted to do three things. One was to say thank you for... Um, your courage in closing County Road for no good reason. And um, uh, I think that was really a, a impressive uh, thing that you did. So I do appreciate that. Um, secondly, I wanted to um, just briefly describe what went on on, uh, on Sunday, November 13th um, and answer any questions you might have. And then lastly, I'd like to uh, um, uh, see what, uh, what the appetite is for more. So um, uh, we had about a hundred or so people, I think, who came out. Um, we didn't really do a formal head count, because um, I don't know how to do that uh, on, a, on a three and a half mile stretch of road with people coming and going from all directions. Um, but I think it was about, a, about I'm going to say about a hundred. At one point, we had, I had a, had somebody ride the length of the of the course. Um, and do a head count while she was while she was biking and going one way she got 55 and coming back she got 45 so you know people come and go from and that was at 11 30 so people had come at nine o'clock in the morning uh they were lined up ready to go before the road even closed um so i'm going to say it here. um thanks to the work of carl Etnier, we had the state police there it was really nice to have them there um had one vehicle there and so they provided a calming effect I believe and um, the officer put out cones along the course he went up and down a couple of times just to show the colors I guess and that, and that was nice um, the um, the reaction was incredible I think um, people were so happy to have County Road closed to have it uh, available for a walking there was there was walkers, there was bikers, rollerbladers, roller skiers, electric bikes, um, roller skates, skateboarders, um, dogs. It was uh, it was really a, a sort of a, a mini party stretched out uh, over a, over a long uh, a long distance. And um, I think the um, the most telling comment that I heard was um, from a fellow who lives. Um, 
over near Powderhorn Glen, uh, right off, right on County Road. And he said, for the first time that I've lived here, I feel like I'm in a neighborhood. Hmm. Because there were people out on the road stopping and talking and just, um, and we met people that we hadn't met uh, in nine years on County Road. So anyhow, I think, I think a, a, a huge success. And um, uh, so getting to my third point, a lot of people said, um, gee, this is fantastic. We're going to do this again. And I said, I don't know. It's not my call. So um, I, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have if you have any. I have a question. Sure. So I was out of town, and I couldn't make it to the event, which sounded super fun. And thank you so much for dreaming it up. Um, I have a friend that lives in your neighborhood that said that there was an email trail going around about neighbors just kind of generally fretting ahead of time. Did you see the, these? And I, I'm sure that after this, were they, did they seem completely assuaged by how well this went and everything? I, or maybe you're not even aware about this. Yeah, no, oh, okay. I, I, I'm not. I, I don't live in a bubble, but I, I, I saw no, no negative okay. um, uh, stuff uh, uh, on, on, on the internet in, in any, in any form. Okay. There was, to the best of my knowledge, there was one person on Sunday morning who was unhappy that the road was closed. I mean, he was able to drive to his destination. I mean, as anybody could, if they wanted to, it was just close to through traffic. One person was mildly unhappy. That's all. That's the only negative thing I heard. Okay. So uh, it doesn't mean that it wasn't out there, but I never heard it. So I don't know specifically what it was. I think it was just fretting, and I'm sure everything went fine. It was totally fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I don't have any questions, but I guess what your main question would be is moving forward. So a, a, a number of people said, you know, can we do this again? Yeah. I know this is great. We should do this some more. So, um, you know, I said, well, I, I don't know. I don't know what the select board is going to think. So let me just go and report to them and then see what the appetite is for more. So I guess one question I would have for all of you is, um, can we do it again? And I don't have a proposal for you. Um, obviously, it wouldn't happen until spring. Um, and I'd be happy to get a group of excited people together and see what kind of ideas they might have for doing it again in some different way or similar way. So you, you'd be thinking sometime in the spring? Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's... Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. That's what I was thinking too. It's like, ooh, winter doesn't really sound that appealing to me. Uh, <laughs> icy roads. Yeah. Somebody did say we should close this on snowstorms and have cross country skiing on <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> Plow's going to get through. Yeah, yeah but no. So, uh, so, from my perspective, I think you just need to come up with a, a proposal. Okay. Um, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, I think we're open to uh, something of the similar nature happening again. I just don't know when, and you know, would it be the same nature Sunday, three hours, whatever? You know, I, I don't, I don't have a yeah, I don't have anything solid in my mind. So I think that's 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 what I would like to see. I don't know, I'm not sure about the rest of the board. Would they like to see um, you coming up with another day or a plan? I think that I think that'd be fine, but I don't know what Amy thinks or John. I would suggest that you draft up a proposal and submit it to the select board when you decide what you want to do, when you want to do it. Um, like for instance, you, you, it would be a little difficult to close the road down in the middle of a snowstorm and um, do the same thing. Um, considering that we have health and safety concerns, fire department, ambulances, all that kind of stuff would have a difficult time going up through there if the road wasn't maintained. So we have to take, you know, I have to consider everyone when we make these decisions and it'd be nice for us to see something in writing. So we could just sit down and look at it and talk about it. And then you can come and present it and uh, we can make a decision then. But he's, he's not thinking of doing it during snow time. Well, I just heard, uh, what I heard was a mention that, that some people want to cross country ski on it. It's going to be hard to do it without snow on it. We're not, we're not thinking about doing that. He's our, Larry already Frank. said, Larry said that's not a good idea. So we're already mixed off the snow part. That was so I we, didn't, that was I didn't get a good, not a good idea part. Okay. <laughs> we're we're jumping ahead and thinking about spring. So 
what you're saying is a proposal in writing, same as what I said, come up with a proposal. That sound good? Yep. Yeah. Larry, would yeah. it be okay if I emailed you? If I, if I, okay, I'll, I'll get to the person that was talking, and I'll see if there was anything specific or legit, and I'll email you if that was the case. Sure. If that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I'm glad it was successful. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Larry. And we'll, and we'll move to the next step and see what we can do. Great. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so um, we're going to move to the next item. It is on time. It's discussed diversity and inclusion statement. Um, so, where are we on that? Well, it was discussed last meeting. Yep. Um, Amy was not here. Right. Um, so, the only public comment we had was the potential to add sexual orientation or request right. to add sexual orientation to the agreement or to the document. Um, I think we're deciding what next steps would be. I think both you and Carl, well, thought, you know, maybe this should go beyond the decision just by the select board. So yeah. the question is what would be the next steps to potentially adopt? Or East Montpelier to adopt. Well, so if the site board, you know, moves it out of its, you know, decides that they want to kick this on to the townspeople, then the town meeting um, would be an, a natural next step to discuss it. And sometimes we're looking for controversial items to discuss at town meeting, or not even controversial, but just something to discuss at town meeting just to get people interested. So this sounds like it could be one of those things where, hey, bring it to town meeting, discuss it and then move forward from there. So that's basically where it was at. And Amy wasn't here, so, I mean, we could just adopt it ourselves, e easy cheesy. So I don't really have any preference one way or the other. I mean, if it's more important than we do it now, and a lot of towns already have, then we could do it now. Or we can just wait and discuss that town meeting, if we have town meeting, because that's a little bit up in the air. And we have some individuals here. I'm not sure if Betsy, um, if anyone wants to, to chime in. We have Paul, who um, did speak at the last meeting about it. So, yep. I, I'll be glad. I'll be I'd glad to chime I'd in. Glad to, I'd be glad to address that as well. And oh, good. also, we have Al Wakefield and Bob Harnish, who are the founders of this here, if you want to chat about that. Um, hello, my neighbors, who I haven't seen in forever, it seems like. So hi, Seth and Carl and others. Um, so this is part of a, uh, the Declaration of Inclusion is something that we have been working to get many, many towns um, to adopt and some have. And I know that you're wrestling with whether to bring it to the broader audience or for the select board to answer that. And both Bob Harnish and Al Wakefield are on the call today. And as I said, they're the founders and they've been working with a lot of towns and maybe they could add some context to what other towns have done, why select boards or city councils have adopted it. I don't know, Al or, or Bob, if you want to jump in and, and explain that, that would be great. Yeah, sure. I'd like to see, you know, the arguments pro and con as far as adopting it to site board level or bringing it to the townspeople. That'd be great for us. Why don't we let Bob go? Uh, Bob's the, Bob's the, uh, the creator, the founder, and uh, very much our inspiration in moving this initiative uh, across the state. Um, and so let, let's let Bob go and I'll fill in whatever details uh, might be helpful once, uh, once Bob concludes. So Bob, you're on. Well, thanks. <clears throat> thanks. And thanks Patty, for being on the call and, uh, and all of you for making time on your agenda. <clears throat> you know, yes, as Betsy said, it's our effort to, uh, to encourage Vermont and all its cities and towns uh, to be more inclusive. And, uh, and uh, uh, I guess it goes, goes in, in part to, you know, the, just the moral aspect of it, uh, where, uh, as we all know, you, the United States has been a welcoming country for 300 or 400 years. And, and, and with the diversity that's uh, occurred as a result of that, we have, uh, we have tremendous, uh, um, 
uh, diversity and 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 uh, economic success. Um, <clears throat> So it's our effort to encourage Vermont, as I say, and all its cities and towns to be more welcoming and respectful. And, and, uh, and so there's, there's a moral aspect to this, but there's also an economic aspect. And that is that, that uh, as the 2020 census uh, showed, um, Vermont is basically stagnant in its population growth. And at the same time, uh, it's, uh, the population is getting older. So th this is not a good, um, recipe for economic vitality for the uh, for the state uh you know you know with, with a with a stagnant uh um you know income level uh you know how, how is the state going to maintain its infrastructure and programming uh so it's just a this is just a, a grassroots effort uh, to encourage vermont and all the cities and towns to to um to uh, publicly be more inclusive, more respectful, more welcoming to people from from all over the world who might uh, want to be here, uh, or look for a place outside of uh, outside of highly metropolitan areas. <clears throat> as we know, as a result of the COVID pandemic, um, you know many people are working from home, and that means they could work from Vermont. And, uh, and bring their families and, and their talents uh, to our beautiful little state in the northeast corner of the world. So uh, um, yeah, so that, that's basically our cause and our, and our, uh, and our request that is, that is to uh, have, um, <clears throat> have towns discuss it. And I think, that, I think it's a very healthy thing uh, that, that should be discussed by by certainly by the select board, but certainly, but also by townspeople, uh, this kind of discussion is is healthy and important. So, um, I'm, I'm wondering, Al, if you have any um, ideas about how many select boards have have offered that versus uh, uh, town meeting broader votes. Has there been discussion about that in yeah. other towns? Yeah, we have, you know, quite honestly, we have uh, we've discouraged uh, towns taking this to the voters with with the with the uh, um, uh, piece that certainly the more people get involved in discussions about this, uh, the better. I mean, you know, while the select board can commit, it's really important that the townspeople understand uh, what the declaration is all about, what it intends to do and to be welcoming as, as a community. But that has to come as a result of, of leadership. And that leadership is typically, uh, 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 it comes from the, from the board of selectmen or the alderman or the city council. Thus far, 80, uh, 82 towns, municipalities across Vermont have adopted the Declaration of Inclusion. And the great majority of them have adopted it just as we have outlined it. Um, two towns have gone to a vote and in one being uh, Clarendon, the other the other being uh, Plymouth, just a couple of weeks ago. Or so, and they uh, the towns overwhelmingly uh, adopted the declaration. But it's our strong feeling that uh, the select board, as leaders in the community, looking out for uh, the image of of the towns, what the town stands for, economic development, economic growth, that's prosperity, etc that the select board, that's an undertaking which the select board can, uh, can, mm -hmm. can take. Um, and the Vermont League of Cities and Towns uh, has looked at this from a legal standpoint and said uh, there's no legal liability. In fact, it's the right thing to do. And in fact, the league, along with the state, which you might have read about uh, in uh, Vermont Digger over the last week, have both adopted programs as follow-ups to the adoption of mm -hmm. the Declaration of Inclusion. So there's a that's the implementation part, if you will. This whole thing ties together in, I, I think, a very neat uh, package of of action, uh, but also information, education, et cetera. Okay. Well, that's a good answer to that part of the question. Um, was there anything else? Paul, you want to say anything? That's something or not, but uh, you got blocked out, whatever you did. I got blocked in? Yeah, you froze yeah. on the screen. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Well, I was just looking for um, any more comment from Paul or Betsy or Bob or whatever. 
Uh, I'll speak brief. I'll speak briefly if I may. Um, sure. But but thanks to Betsy and and Al and I'm I'm sorry and Bob. Um, and I came to the meeting um, convinced that it would be best if the question went to the town, the town meeting. And, and now, um, Al, you've raised questions in my mind <laughs> whether that's the wisest course. But in any event, it, it, I, I, it would be lovely one way or another for this town to consider and hopefully adopt um, this resolution. Um, you know, one of the reasons, Paul and, and Seth and others, that, that we've been urging the select boards to do it is obviously that the statement is very brief. If you if you read it, it's mm -hmm. just a couple of sentences. And that is by intention because there's so much that needs to be said, needs to be learned, needs to be added. But we what we think that the, the, as as the um amount of towns, the number of towns that vote to have this, thinking about sort of what we're saying more broadly as a state. You know, when, when I got involved in this, Al, I think you guys were at, at like 20 towns or something, and we've been working at it for, for over a year. And, and now, Bob, I can't remember what the number is. I know that the population is at 50%, but we've got, we've got a lot of towns, and, and we're really gunning for that you know, every single town in Vermont, because if you think about the message that that can send to, you know, Vermonters, as well as people beyond our borders, uh, you know, uh, we need a few more people here, not not tons, tons more people, but we need a few more people here. And, and we are working on all the things that we have to do to, to do that. Yes, housing is an issue and all of those things, but we've got to show the world that Vermont is that welcoming place. And this teeny little couple of sentences is really just a start of the conversation. It's not the end or, okay, we're done. We're never talking about it again. It is the beginning of that conversation. And I think, Al, you mentioned the governor's announcement the other day that he's got a program to help towns sort of tease this out more so that it's not just a one and done statement. Hey, the select board voted and we never have to deal with that again. We we won't have accomplished anything. It's more like the select board voted. We now have that declaration of inclusion. What else can we do? And there's going to be a program and money with the League of Cities and Towns to help towns think through that a little bit more. So this is just the beginning. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well said, Betsy. The chamber was one of the first uh, state organizations to really come forward. And in fact, the bet we we're not going to do a website. You know, we're three three eighty plus year old guys, and uh, we said <laughs> a website. We don't need a website. What about a website, right? <laughs> and Betsy said, "You three eighty year old guys, you really do need a website." And so <laughs> Betsy and the chamber developed a website, and that has been the thing which has launched us uh, so that we have the support of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, Vermont uh, Interfaith Action, the NAACP, the Social Equity Caucus, um, all of the organizations that care about Vermont that are in both the spiritual as well as the day-to-day the -day kind of realistic feet on the ground uh, responsibility for helping Vermont grow and prosper. They're all backing this uh, for, for sure. And so, you know, to have East Montpelier uh, adopt would be uh, uh, would be a, a, a wonderful thing. We're still working on Montpelier, uh, et cetera. And I, I don't know whether you guys compete with Montpelier or not. I don't know what the, <laughs> what the political aspects of this all are, but they are close. And uh, so you could be closer and right on it should you move to adopt. But as Betsy you. said, and I'll <laughs> shut up, there is a, there is a follow-up and let, let's be real. This is really important. Uh, uh, to the growth and prosperity of, of the state. I don't think there's any question about that. If we're going to compete, uh, if you're going to compete with Montpelier and Montpelier is <laughs> going to compete with Brattleboro and Brattleboro and Vermont are going to compete with, the, with New Hampshire and we're going to compete as a state, we've got to do, we've got to be something other than green for trees. We've got to be green for people, green for development. This is one piece uh, of a very, very important and vital mission to the growth and development of Vermont. Good one. Okay. May, may, so, I, may I add one, just one little piece? Um, go ahead. To, to, just to say to Betsy and, and Bob and Al, one little tweak that uh, maybe you've heard before that 
uh, a few of us noticed that we would like to make to the language is to add in the categories sexual orientation. Yeah. Yeah, we, we think that's fine. Yeah. So we should amend that, put that in there, because we haven't. Mm. Right. So it sounds like to me, and just speaking to the rest of the site board that is in attendance, that we just should um, adopt it and not wait till town meeting. That sounds I'm like, fine with that, especially since we don't know there is going to be a town meeting. That's, I mean, that's what I think, too. The only compelling argument for keeping it for that would be to get interest in town meeting, I guess, as you said. But Right. But it sounds like from what we're hearing is the select board should move ahead and adopt it. That's what I'm hearing. Sure. And I'm, I'm good with that. I'm good with that, too. Yeah. Where so, would you snip in the um, sexual orientation part? Would it be... Gender identity. I don't have expression. it in front of me, do I? I don't think I have the. It's in the packet. Yeah. Oh, it's in the packet. Okay, yeah. let me look. Welcome to all persons, regardless of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, gender identity, <laughs> right. or expression. Could be anywhere in there. So and that's the first sentence. Those are not listed in priority order. <laughs> <laughs> Added after sex, maybe yeah, sex, exactly. comma, sexual orientation. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Well, I will create an updated version of this that reads for East Montpelier and bring it to the next meeting. Or we could pass it now, just or with that correction. Sure. I'm for That's doing that important. myself. That's fine. You good with that, John? I'm good with it. Okay. We need a motion. So moved. I move that we adopt the amended. Declaration of Inclusion. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Thank you very, very much. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, folks. Some education. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you. <laughs> good, night. good night. Good night. Good night, folks. Good night, folks. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, so we've adopted that and we'll move forward and see what happens. I think that's pretty safe move and a positive move. Um, so let's see, what's next here? Um, consideration of quote for completion of land records digi digitization project. And that's Rosie. Um, I can't. <laughs> I see you there, Rosie. Can you hear me? No, she's nodding her head, so I'm assuming she does. Yeah, um, she, Rosie, you're, you're muted. Yeah, Rosie's muted. I think she's trying to unmute. There she goes. There it goes. There you are. <laughs> OK. So this looks like a quote that you had done. This is um, in addition to the quote that we received last June. Yeah. And the rationale behind it is that while they knew how many images there were in our microfilm, it wasn't clear at the time that there were a number of documents on each page. And they charge us by document because each document has to be indexed separately. Yeah. So, so we have an issue with um, three to four mortgage discharges to a page that we weren't anticipating, which has brought the cost up a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I assume this money's not in our budget. It's not. Um, however, this is certainly an ARPA eligible expense. Perfect. So this would one shot thing go too. on the list yeah. for Yes. Options for ARPA. Exactly. So. Yeah. so that sounds like it'd be a good idea. That's a yes. very good idea. Yeah. Just have get to get it done. done. It's yes. a one time expense, which yeah. is ARPA money is good for that. And Rosie has held her feet to the fire. This is the this is the last <laughs> of the good. adjusted adjusted quote. So yeah. So it sounds to me like we should get a motion and get this done. Authorize Rosie to do it. Actually, you authorized Gina to do it. 
I signed the quote. Oh, you're the one that signed it? I signed the quote. Oh, okay. After I've seen it, I signed the quote. So we need someone to say that. Okay, I, I move that we authorize Gina to sign the Avenue Enterprise Solutions quote for documents. Digitization. Digitization of documents, thank you. Sales order number, maybe? We'll put that in there. We put the amount, it's $8,521.41. Yeah. yeah. And now, now we need a second on that. And John just said that. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Done. Thank um, you. You're good, Rosie? Great. Thank you. Um, review of quote for road foreman truck plow. I think people have seen the quote. 8,500 or something like 8635. that. 8,635. 8,635. Um, Working on trying to sell the old truck, which will offset some of the costs. He thinks we will at least get 5,000 for the old truck, hoping that it will get more than that. But he's reached out to various auction houses and is working on that. Yep. Where this was budgeted, how this was budgeted, I'm not really sure. There's no documentation that directly spells that out. Um, so. Well, it's a capital cost. Yeah, so it comes out of the capital, capital reserve yeah. or capital yeah. fund. Um, the only thing I'd like to see if we could is if this, we probably have to authorize this to come out of the capital fund, but we could authorize the money that we get to go it back in. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah most, so yeah. I was going to say the motion should, could say that. That'd be great. Okay. Because so. that was my intent. So yes. that would be great to yeah. spell that out. I yeah. have a really dumb question. Okay. Like, the dumbest. Is okay. this a, a plow that you just put on the front of a truck? Is that what this This yeah. isn't a truck? It's no, no. A this blade. is a plow. Okay. You go behind the truck and you plow the fields, especially on North Street. Okay. Right, Thank you. To stop the wind from blowing. Okay. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It goes on the front of the truck. <laughs> and it plows the snow, and the snow goes to one side or the other. You don't have to be mean. Just <laughs> <laughs> your tone. Oh, my tone. Uh, no. So you need a motion on that? Yeah, we need a motion to say we could take the money out of the capital fund and then. We should reserve, should put the money back in for when we sell the truck and plow the old one. Okay, so um, I make a motion that uh, that uh, since we're comfortable with the quote that we authorize Road Foreman Perry to proceed with the purchase via well via our motion to approve this, and that we utilize the money out of the capital reserve account and replace what we can of that money used out of the reserve account by selling the, the uh, old pickup and plow. And you want to put an amount up there? Uh, put in the amount of $8,635.22. Yes. Hopefully it doesn't go over that. Right. You want to say up to, you want to say up to 9,000? Yeah, I, I would. Yeah. Up to okay, 9,000. I'll say up to 9,000. Yeah. And then we need a second on that. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, you do have it. <laughs> uh, town Treasury Report. Is that Gina? Same report, nothing extraordinary to point out necessarily. Um, probably more importantly to that is the, an update on the liquid tax collection which is next on the item, on the agenda. Yeah. So I assume that um, in the various categories that we're approaching 50% of the year close. And I assume in some of the categories we're over the 50 or 40%. Mm -hmm. Are there ones that are alarming to you? So it's really. a salary line. Uh, well, what we understand what that is. Yeah, yeah. So it's not alarming. Um, right. So no, nothing really. That's 
nothing that we don't understand or know or has mm -hmm. necessarily a surprise. As we work through the budget for fiscal 24, some of those types of things that are, again, no no bridges, staffing mix changes, you know, the insurance, uh, health adjusting. insurance. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing is jumping out at you at this point. Now, and you'll see one of the changes when we, when we, and I don't know that we'll delve into any level of detail necessarily, but with the fiscal 24 budget, yeah. one of the things I am doing that I don't think has been done in the past is reforecasting the current year, um, because I think it's important to do so. We have a completely different staff, staff not completely, but a fairly different staffing structure than what was included in the current year budget. Um, obviously, we know health insurance has gone up, um, so I think it's important for us to kind of reforecast the current year to help us then go into the next year to better explain where the fiscal year 24 budget numbers are coming from. And, so, and just so everyone understands, we have more people doing health, taking health insurance. Right now, we have um, we previously had an employee on a health stipend. That person is actually going on to the town's insurance. Oh. So, for example, the budget for fiscal year uh, 23 assumed six people would be using the town's health insurance. And, in fact, we will have all nine eligible employees using uh, health coverage. So um, That's significant. That's yeah. huge. It's a yeah. significant cost. It is. Yeah. Uh, it is what it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, so if everyone's happy with the town treasury report, we can move to the delinquent tax collector update. So with this, and unfortunately I realize I actually forgot I put the report on the, it's just a summary report, which you have the numbers here on the website, but I forgot to actually put it up. Mm -hmm. um, so... We have 301,000, uh, just under 302,000 outstanding right now. There's about 37,000 that still needs to be posted that we've gotten that oh, are yeah. not in that number yet. And I know while I was standing out front earlier, two people at least I know of came in to pay today. Um, the notices were just sent out. So people know now for anyone that has, I did hear someone comment to Rosie, you know, I've never missed, go ahead, Rosie. <laughs> We've had three people just today who have never been late with their tax bills come in to pay. Um, and we have an inordinate number of people who are on the late list now that have never been on the late list. Oh. So we're hoping that the notices that just went out last week prompt people to come in. I'm guessing that maybe what prompted some people to come in today. Um, so we'll keep you updated and then you know, Michelle, this is something she's obviously looking at quite closely and will come to the board for any next steps as necessary. Michelle and I both may need, you know, Michelle may need some help and guidance and how the town has historically or typically addresses oh, yeah. delinquent tax uh -huh. payments. So anyone that can offer some advice that she may reach out to. Well, I, I know uh, like, I know the long history of tax collection. Well, that's what I, yeah. so she and I discussed this today yeah. because we understand statutorily what next steps may be. The yeah. question is, how have we typically handled things? Yeah. Like, what's the town's approach? So she'll need some, some yeah. help with that. So, so, we, so where are we historically though? It sounds hot. So historically, last year at this time, we were at 239,000. And you're around 260 so, something now. So we're about 40,000 difference. Take right. away the 37, we're getting a little bit closer. But, yeah, but still, you know, still but high. Still, it's still high. Yeah. Still high, yeah. Ugh. So we want to see what happens with the notices just going out. See right. what comes in. Yeah. But then we'll need to probably, if you're open to Michelle reaching out to you, because I did mention oh, yeah. you likely knew this very well. Oh, yeah. So she would certainly want to probably go over that list with you and maybe have some discussions oh, about yeah. your thoughts on Absolutely. how to move forward. Yep. Yeah, it's been the issue for years. And we've handled it. I mean, Bruce took it over. Yeah. Uh, we used to have a tax collector, but then that kind of went south. So Bruce took it over. And it went along all right, you know. There's always repeat offenders, always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and there's always the ones you have to strong arm, and then there's some that don't need that. 
but it's almost like every individual is a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. She and I actually found that. a paper file late this afternoon we stumbled upon that was some delinquent tax collector info. So yeah. she grabbed that and was going to start mm -hmm. going through that. But yeah. again, just really trying to get a feel for yeah. what, what have we done as next steps. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the next item is discuss tree warden stipend. So the, the tree warden receives a $1,000 stipend. There was a note on the appointment schedule that I inherited that said for this year, would the select board con consider there, there's a total of $2,000 allocated to tree wardens. 1,000 being to the tree warden and 1,000 being to a deputy tree warden. Yeah. We have not gotten a deputy tree warden yeah. today. So there was a note to question whether the full $2,000 should be paid to Paul, our current tree warden. So we paid the only the 1,000 because obviously that's not, that's all we were authorized um, that we processed in the, the last payroll. But if the select board would like to move forward with paying Mr. Kate the other $1,000 since there has been no identified deputy tree warden then we can do so. I just wanted to mention that because this note was. Right. I think the thousand was a more than he's usually gotten paid. Actually, I don't know if he got paid at all before. That was the first, yeah, I think he got, did he even get a stipend at all? I think I last think year so. was the first year of a stipend. He And we gave him that stipend because we knew it was going to be a really busy year because of the. Right. Yes. But I don't know if it makes sense to give him another thousand. Okay, that's Nothing that's against the work that he's been doing because he does a lot of work. Yes, but, he does. But on the other hand, we really should be getting a deputy tree warden. Well, because he's aging out of it, you know, his eyesight's a problem, and we want to educate someone to come along. Now, not that we can't just bring and put two thousand in the budget, but considering that we're over on a lot of other things, I think we should just give him the thousand. I'm not trying to run him down either. Believe me, he does no. a great job. No, he does. Yes. He does. I mean, he probably earns way more than that. But on the other hand, because he hasn't gotten a stipend in the past, probably happy with a thousand. Put the thousand back into the budget. Good and enough. try to find a deputy. Tree exactly. Tree. Yeah. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. John, you have any opinions? I agree with you totally. I and and we do know he does a really good job. But um, that this was the first year of his stipend, so let's leave it at that this year. And if we need to change it next year, we can. Yeah, that's what I think too. Yeah. I mean, none of us do it for the money. Uh, speak for yourself. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. Daddy Warbucks, come on. Oh, Daddy Warbucks, nice. <laughs> I don't usually hear that in conjunction with my name, but sometimes I do, I must admit. Um, Okay, preliminary discussion on 2023 town meeting warning. So I'm bringing this to you because in year last year, this is this is the yep. meeting when this was first brought to you all. This is drafted in a format that would be an in-person town meeting. Yeah. So first question for the select board is how do we want to proceed with town meeting and whether that decision made tonight or not, I don't know, but at least open up the dialogue um, for discussion of how we will proceed. The format can obviously change accordingly, depending on what we do. Yeah, I don't know what the status is with the legislature. Um, Rosie has, the legislature, I believe, is leaving as is, so town meeting can be either in person or not. They're leaving that in place? I mean, Duxbury opted out this year. I read in the paper the other day. I don't know why they opted out, but obviously they were able to opt out. So legislature left that door open. I can't remember that was, I don't believe that was a permanent thing last year. John, do you remember? I don't think it was supposed to be permanent. It must be they just didn't bother to act on it and decided to have it carry through. Yeah, I'm not sure. Rosie, you know anything? Sorry, I, I missed the last part of the conversation. I went to get a drink of water. <laughs> For town meeting, Rosie, the legislature, does the legislature still have in place that the towns can opt out of an in-person town meeting? No. That's my thought. Then how did Duxbury do it? Because I just read in the paper the other day. 
that they were not having in person. Who is that, Duxbury? The town of Duxbury, yeah. It was on the front page of the Times Argus that they're not having in person town meeting. At least that's why I got out of it. Well, you can, if you don't have an in person town meeting, my understanding is that the, the COVID emergency rules end on January 15th. And that after that, you're not permitted to use those, those emergency rules. It looks like David might have something to respond to that. Yeah, Duxbury voted on election day. They held a special town meeting to change the way they vote on town meeting day to Australian ballot. So they formally made the shift. Formally, they ended town meeting. Yes. Yeah. There will be no more town meeting in Duxbury ever? No more no. in-person meeting. No floor, oh. no floor vote, basically. Oh, OK. They did it by Australian ballot on election day. Oh, so they'll just have a so forum. So could do so, that. Yeah. OK, that's how they did it. So they didn't have any, any go ahead from the legislature, any special go ahead or anything that was residual from last year's decision. This is a completely separate decision. Okay, so we don't know anything. We know that right now we'd have to have town meeting in person because we didn't decide not to. We didn't put it, put it to the voters on election day. And we don't think the town legislature is gonna have the opt out version this year because they're not operating on the COVID rules. That's what Rosie just said. Unless they have new rules, but we don't know that. We don't know. Correct? So more than likely we should just plan for town meeting. I think so. As yet, yeah. Is as painful as that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Carl would give you a good slap down right now. I know. That. <laughs> I know he would. And he would give me a lecture about that. <laughs> 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 Okay, um, so let's plan on having a format that would be in person. So looking over what we have, everything looks fine. Mm -hmm. This does mm -hmm. assume in person. Yes. Yep. Anybody have any comments about this layout? now? Of course, the property tax thing, you do understand that's been a little controversial about how we're doing it now, but I'm fine with it. The postmark thing. Yes. Oh. Yes. Remember this? Does everyone remember? Yes. From the last Yes. Time. It got changed on the floor, even though it wasn't legal. It got changed to this, which is actually how it, this follows the statute more closely, I believe. I believe. And so we, we've talked about this endlessly uh, ad nauseum. <laughs> I think it works fine the way it is. Does anybody have any strong thoughts and opinions? Bruce was always against this. He's like, well, you know, the postmark makes them come in late and then we can't budget. It doesn't really make that much difference. No. You know, it's a day. What, what, uh, okay. So it winds, somebody's taxes got delayed in the mail, which was a big point, and then you get the thing a month later. But they had to write postmark on, and that screws up the budget. Well, it doesn't really. One that's person. like one person. It's not gonna yeah, one person not gonna make that much difference. Yeah. Come on. <coughs> that was the argument. That really is like, come on. You're wasting your time arguing like that. Rosie had her hand up for a minute. Yeah, Rosie. You had something to say on this? Oh, you're, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> It wasn't about the um, the postmark issue, which no. which I agree to what you you just discussed. Uh, it's rare that we have any come in the mail that are significant after you know after tax day is over. Um, I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention that regardless of how town meeting is held, um, the school board is going to come to you in the next couple of meetings to ask if you would consider mailing ballots to all voters who are not challenged um, for the school ballot. So that's also going to be a time when you will want to consider whether you're going to do that for the town ballot as well. Doesn't It isn't up for discussion tonight, but I know that it's coming down the pike. So if you just want to start thinking about that and what that may look like, 
Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually going to have three different ballots this year. And the Central Vermont Career Center ballot will not be able to be mailed out at the same time as others if we were to do as we have the last two years. They would be by request only based on what their what their um, their charter is, how their charter is worded right now. Okay, but that's so the issue though for us is are we just gonna mail ballots to voters that ordinarily would vote by Australian ballot? That's different than the items on the town meeting. That's right. That's yeah. why I was saying I, I put right. my hand out. So So that's probably what we would decide to do is to mail the ballots to the voters with the school ballot, the ones that are items that are voted by Australian ballot. We probably would decide to do that. I mean, we'll have a discussion, obviously, but just yeah. keep in mind that we're only able to mail out the school ballot if all the other four towns agree yes. to do the same. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with that. Okay, thank you. But thank you for bringing that up. That's a good point. Okay. Anything else? Anybody wants to talk about on this on the town meeting warning? Nope. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Actually, yes. Yes, Rogue. I, I just want to put it out there that um, it was, I, I feel that Gina did an incredibly good job getting this together, and I appreciate the collaboration that she used um, in asking me questions about it as well. So um, thank you. Yeah. Thank everybody for working together on it. Yeah. It looks suspiciously like last year. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought too. <laughs> there were actually more differences than you would think because last year's was not in person. So that's true. <laughs> but we did have a pen template in the beginning when we talked about the articles. Oh, and it was all yellow like this one? Oh yeah. Yeah, it had yellow yeah. places yeah. on it. Yes, right. well, if you all are used to the yellow, I highlight the yellow again, just oh, like your okay. previous town. Of Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so uh, let's see. Town forum. We're planning to do that at a select board meeting the Monday before. Is that correct? That's what How we've been doing. You all like to do it? Well, we used to do it in the school on Saturday, uh, but that was turned out to be such a waste of time. Okay, so we're going to do it Monday then. Yeah. Monday before town meeting and yes. a regular meeting. Yes. And that works that out much better. It works out way better. Okay. So that's the night before, just so you know. It's the night before, yeah. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. No, it is the night before. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. The first right. Okay. So I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention that it would be at the select board meeting the Monday before. Um so are we all set with that item? Yes. Okay. Preliminary discussion on FY 2024 budget development. So I've just, I don't know how you normally review the budget. Essentially, I'm kind of putting this out here as something for you all to take a look at. It's yeah. very preliminary. Um, some staffing costs have been updated. Some costs have been updated. Uh, highway has not been changed yet. And we know we need to revisit some of the budgets for highway. Guthrie and I are going to meet this week to go over his portion of the budget. Um, Rosie and I still need to get together on her portion of the budget as well. Um, so <laughs> some of it's flat, except for the things I know right now. Okay. And I'm looking at historical spend as well mm -hmm. as I look through these. So this is... Mm -hmm is meant to be a preview and a slightly different format than what you're used to as well. So happy to take any comments and suggestions on that as well. Hey Seth, hey Seth can I make a comment? Uh, you want to comment? I do, I do. I, I have actually not looked at the budget. I was at the CIC meeting um, for the last meeting and I was the um, loan dissenter of the of the proposal. It's a flat budget that is will be presented to the um, select board 
And unfortunately, I can't make the next meeting. I'll be changing diapers with my two new <laughs> grandsons in Maryland. But I um I just wanted to mention, and I think that um, it may be presented there, but with uh, with the increase in inflation and and what the kind of what the markets look like, um, the committee was approved a flat budget going forward for the next year, and I thought that um, the select board might want to consider some sort of um, uh, multiplier or or an increase because of costs for any sort of capital improvements that may be coming forward in the next year, two, three, or four years. So just a brief comment only because I probably will not be able to make the meeting, your, ne your next meeting next Monday, but thank you. Okay, so I just want to comment on that. Um, in the capital plan, there's paid line, which is usually the biggest line in there. So it, personally, I'd like to look at that to see where we are on paving, because paving is a huge driver of cost. Um, so I think, you know, that's one of the lines I would look at to see where we are on the paving, repaving. Uh, but the other, the other thing that um, I'm conscious of is our delinquent taxes look like they could be increasing a lot. So, and we also have a lot of costs, uh, higher costs on the municipal side of things with insurance, et cetera, et cetera. So I think I do, you know, would be to try to keep that flat with, you know, paving, et cetera, looking at that line. Um, but I am pretty sensitive to the fact that we have a lot of costs going up and we may have to hold the line on that uh, particular item. So that's all I got to say for it right now. I mean, it doesn't make sense to put a multiplier in there that's tied to inflation, but unfortunately, you know, a lot of our residents are struggling. So that's kind of where I'm at on that. No, 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 Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Thank um, you. So, any more comments on the proposed budget? We have multiple pages to look at, they're in very fine print. Um, <laughs> there was no bigger last year. <laughs> there no bigger. Well, um, you could make it bigger if you want to make that executive decision, if you so chose. It's hard to fit this much. <laughs> That's okay. Um, anybody else have any comments? John, Amy? No, I just I just want to look at it some more. I um I can see just going through it that most of the cost increases are where, where we expected them to be, you know, in salary and in healthcare and yeah. in insurances. Um, and so that's what we're expecting. We have to work the best we can to keep it as low as we can in other areas, and still yeah. keep everything going. <laughs> You know, the infrastructure improvements and everything still going as best we can, too, considering everything. So if we add one employee for health insurance, <coughs> is that 30000 Well, on a family plan. On a family plan, it's 30000 And that's roughly one cent on the tax rate. So that's just something to remember. If we're adding three families onto our health insurance, that's three cents right there on the tax rate. So that's just putting that in real life terms. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Any other comments on the FY 2024 budget development? Amy? Nope. Nope. John, Rosie. Okay. Keep moving forward. That's what I'm trying to do, but I don't want to make sure I don't want to be moving too quickly. Nope. No, I meant we'll keep moving forward with the budget. <laughs> oh, very good. Thank you for clarifying. I have detailed calculations. They're very detailed on salary costs, health insurance costs, all the benefit yes. costs, because yeah. they're calculating these down to a much more detailed level than they were previously. I'm happy to share. I'll probably send you all a PDF of that via email. Um, and you can take a look at it. It may be more than you care to dig into, but... Um, but it, it's available. I mean, basically, it's common sense to know we have increased costs. So, I mean, all you're doing is proving a point, really. You're going through the calculations to yeah. show us 
but I don't even need to know the calculations. I could just apply a multiplier to it and say, good enough. I know exactly where it's going to go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, anyway, um, let's move to the next item. Discussion on town management in light of COVID-19. Uh, we're still, we're at low. I mean, I don't know when we're going to leave that based on the new way things are calculated, but it's kind of same as yeah. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So. Sounds good to me. Any comments on that, John? Amy? Okay. By the way, Oh, we got to look at warrants. Guys, I think we're going to have to move that I sign them, right? Because there's only yes. two of us here. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so we'll have to do a motion on that. Um, delinquent tax collector. I'm just looking at your report. Um, warrants. So we should do the. So, I mean, everyone should look at them, but yeah. we're going to need a motion to say. I move that, that we authorize Seth Gardner to um, sign the warrants on the select board's behalf due to quorum. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Hmm. And I mean, I can look this over if you want to go on with the town administrator report. Yeah, really, all, I don't have much in here. Uh, County Road is complete. Um, I'm waiting for final invoices from Pike Industries, and I was actually working on that immediately prior to this meeting to get my arms around all of the costs um, in total for the project. And we'll give you all a re recap at the next meeting because everything, all the invoices should be in at that point. Um, Michelle is following up with Sullivan Powers because we have yet to get our audit report. So um, she sent an email this afternoon. So keep you posted on that. Um, we've had five new applications since the last select board meeting uh, for permits. There's been a total of 77 for this year. And then we have the dates of the next select board meeting, which um, December 5th, Amy, I believe you can't attend. I that. think I probably will be here now. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, then December 19th, and then I have January 3rd, so. Yeah, I'll be here for all those three. Okay. Yep, I believe so. And so far, it doesn't appear that we're going to need a special meeting in December. Um, so 5th and 19th, we shouldn't need more than that. Okay, good. Now, we've right. had times where we've had like a gajillion meetings in December. <laughs> yeah, every week. Yeah, yeah. literally. Right. That Is was, that related to budget? Yeah. Budget okay. stuff, yeah. Hopefully not. Yeah. I mean, I I mean if it happens, it happens. Yes. Yeah. We're used to it. Yeah. Is that all you had? <laughs> What's beef purchase reimbursement? Uh, recreation board. Oh, recreation board. Huh. All right. You want to see these, Amy? Sure. business there wasn't any other business should I move to adjourn seems awful early yeah it does do you want me to talk a little bit before I do that <laughs> fill in the time with some <laughs> well I have already been told I talk too much so I am not gonna say anything <laughs> I think you did great tonight Seth yes you did <laughs> I, I, I think you're looking for something for me from me I, I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn this meeting tonight you're gonna like you're gonna move you're gonna move for adjournment. Yes. Okay. I second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 It's about seven forty-one. How's that? <laughs>